The argument over South Africa's governing structure is becoming more heated as former President Jacob Zuma and his MK party push for the nation to abandon its constitutionalism. Before we continue, please kindly hit on the subscribe button. The present constitutional framework, according to Zuma and his allies, is inadequate to remedy the historical injustices and socioeconomic gaps that many South Africans have experienced. They urge a change to parliamentary supremacy, arguing that this would provide more accountable and direct representation. However, leaders of civil society and legal professionals have strongly opposed this attempt. Prominent constitutionalist attorney Tembika Ngukuitobi has been very outspoken in his opposition. Ngukuitobi argues that parliamentary supremacy is fundamentally defective, characterizing it as an imperialist institution that was historically used to maintain apartheid laws. Ngukuitobi emphasized in a recent remark that the 1996 establishment of South Africa's constitutional framework was a laborious accomplishment. It resulted from protracted talks and a shared determination to build a society based on social fairness, democracy, and basic human rights. The Constitution is intended to be a living text that may change to meet the requirements of the country while still offering a reliable framework for government. Nguke Tobi criticizes parliamentary supremacy because he believes it may weaken the checks and balances that are necessary for a robust democracy by consolidating power in the hands of a small number of people as it did during the apartheid period, when legislative choices often went uncontested and resulted in significant human rights abuses and institutional oppression, he contends that this structure permits the misuse of authority. Furthermore, Ngoke Tobi emphasizes that legislative supremacy in place of the present constitutional structure might undo the progress accomplished in defending individual rights and guaranteeing judicial independence. The separation of powers is enshrined in the current constitutional structure, which allows the judiciary to function as a check on the excess of the legislative and executive branches. It is obvious that these important conversations will have a significant impact on how South Africa's government develops as the debate goes on. Figures like Ngukurutobi remind the country of the significance of preserving a system that safeguards the rights of all people and averts the return to an age of unbridled political power even as Zuma and his MK party seek for a radical change. Once more, the text identifies a time when government officials put their own interests ahead of the welfare of the nation, and claims that this counter-revolution agenda seriously weakened both the party and the state. One especially notable example of the criticism leveled during the period of Jacob Zuma's presidency is the drawn-out ratification of the Financial Intelligence Center Act. The fact that FICA took so long to implement a crucial step in the fight against money laundering during Zuma's administration serves as an example of the self-serving behavior of certain ministers. These ministers made the decision to put their own wealth growth ahead of any possible international backlash against South Africa's financial standing. A period of significant governance failures is indicated by this breach of public trust and the prioritization of personal wealth above national responsibility. The paper makes a strong case for how these acts, which have their roots deep in the Zuma period, have had a lasting impact on South Africa's political and economic environment. It suggests that the participating ministers, some of whom are still in office, were driven by an unflinching devotion to self-interest, sometimes at the cost of the longer-term interests of the country. This self-interest jeopardized important financial rules in addition to eroding public trust in the government's ability to act in the interests of the country. Thus. A time period marked by pervasive corruption and incompetence is presented as the legacy of Jacob Zuma's leadership. According to the text, the problems that South Africa is now facing have their roots in this historical period, which highlights the terrible consequences of this kind of government over time. The mention of scary stuff highlights the serious worries about the future of the country if this trend continues unchecked. The election of Cyril Ramaphosa to lead the African National Congress, ANC, in 2017 is seen as a turning point for South Africa. The election of Ramaphosa is seen as a possible watershed, offering hope for a break from the unscrupulous behavior that characterized the Zuma administration. It is inferred that under his leadership, ethics and responsibility will be given the attention they deserve, which is essential to stopping the nation's continued decline. To put it simply, 